Do you know the central square in Tbilisi? During the demonstration, the government speakers and the speakers' rostrum stood there. Behind them, on the building of the executive committee of the Communist Party, there always hung portraits of the party leaders in full figure, two floors in height. At the peak of the demonstration, when the entire square was packed with people, and while a member of the government was delivering his speech, suddenly the gigantic portrait of Stalin burst into flames. Father Gabriel had gained entrance into the upper floor of the executive committee building, opened a window and poured kerosene on the back of the portraits. Uh, is this... Uh, maybe this is a... is this a legend? Some things, of course, have been enshrouded by legend. But he burned the portraits. Lenin's portrait burned immediately. Horror came over the square. They all froze from fear and everything became still. While the pictures of the leaders were in flames, from the second floor window, Father Gabriel gave a sermon. The Lord said, Thou shalt not make unto thee idols or any graven images. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt have no other gods. Exodus 20, verse 3 to 5. The Georgians have always been Christians, so why are you bowing down before idols? Jesus Christ died and on the third day rose again, but your cast idols will never be resurrected. Even during their life they were dead. Evidently he also said another phrase, and perhaps more. They brought him down, they brought in some fire engines and raised ladders, but when they brought him down, the crowd fell upon him, they kicked him, hit him with rifle butts, flailed him with fire hoses. They screamed, let me finish off that louse. How could they, uh, you know, like, how did they let him, like, why wasn't he shot? The reason they didn't shoot him is that they carried him off almost like a corpse. His face couldn't be made out. He was, his skull was fractured and there were 17 fractured bones in his body. He lay almost unconscious for a month, but he was treated carefully so that investigations could be conducted. It seemed that they were going to arrange a show trial, but they couldn't even get the condemned man onto a stretcher. He didn't respond to the treatment at all. The entire time he was at death's door, but he didn't die. This is what I was told. I had only just been born at the time. Beyond that, I don't know anything with certitude. Father Gabriel won't speak with anyone about it. Either it dragged on until the crush of amnesties, or they tried for a long time to uncover a conspiracy, to get out of him the names of the conspirators. Then, either he was certified as psychologically not responsible for his actions, or they helped him, or it became too unpleasant to the authorities. When within several years they released him, he was suspended from priestly ministry. Not only in the church, but for ten years' time they wouldn't hire him anywhere. It is fortunate for him that there was a house, that he had a mother, the old woman who opened the gate for you. Both of them lived on his pension. Since he was a certified lunatic, he was allotted by the state 17 rubles a month. Everywhere people knew and were afraid of him.
Gadi. Gadiel. At first he wandered among the villages and was hired to guard the vineyards or to tend the fire in churches. Then his mother became paralyzed from all the trauma and he could no longer go anywhere. For several years he could be found sitting at the portico of some church with an outstretched hand. Kiri, Shuhuste, Jelon, 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 Jel